Apostle. Amen. As she comes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You know you're going to move this tree right here, right? I know every year. Every year. <laughs> the decorations are beautiful. Amen. But I just need them out the way when it's time for me to deliver the word. Amen. Father, we just ask that you be with us right now, Lord God, as we get into the word that you have prepared for us to receive on this day, Lord God. Father, we just thank you. We just ask that you would just allow me to decrease and your Holy Spirit increase, Lord God. Father, just allow me to be able to teach this word with the passion in which you gave it, Lord God. But don't allow me to rush it to the point where I rob the people. So, Father, I ask that you just simply have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You all may be seated. Uh, I think about uh, last week. We had such a wonderful, wonderful time in here on last week. And this is the word that the Lord gave me to bring forth last week. Uh, but as you all know, the way the Spirit of the Lord moved in here, I was not able to go forward with the word. But when you think about the title of what the Lord wanted me to deliver last week that I'm bringing forth today, it's called Breaking Cycles. And if you were in tune in the Spirit, you know that God was breaking some stuff on last week. Some cycles that individuals have been in for a long time, unable to get out of, amen? And so God moved in a powerful way in this place on last week. But oftentimes, even after a moment like that takes place, you have to seal it with some understanding. You have to seal it, excuse me, with some understanding. One of the things that I, uh, 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 the scripture that actually stood out to me and I believe it was Shirley that said something about it even in her prayer when we came to the altar. Turn your Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 12. This isn't even a part of my message or what the Lord had actually given me, but it just kept ringing out in my spirit after last Sunday. And then it was ringing out again this morning, so I just jotted it down. But then when Shirley had said, some of us here at the altar... Lay things at the altar. And she also said, some of you all may have picked some stuff back up. Because what you have to understand is, whenever deliverance goes forth, you have to know that that doesn't end everything right then and there. And if you don't understand that, you will find yourself in the same place or even worse. Because you can't go through a major process of deliverance and don't do anything different. Right. Amen. You, you, you can't do it. Like I said, you can have moments. We can come to this altar. Y'all know how we flow in. We can come to this altar. I, I can see how God has been using Kiana lately in a couple of the services. And things have just been shifting and dealing with stuff. I mean, I think about one time she was dealing with one lady. But guess what? There was three others around that was dealing with the same thing. God is moving. But when you think about it, if you experience a moment like that and you don't do anything different, was it nothing wrong with the moment? Let me tell you something. I, I can cast out all kind of demons. But one thing I know for sure, ain't nothing wrong with me as the deliverer or the people that God used. To bring forth deliverance in the atmosphere. Because sometimes people want to know, well, what happened? They doing the same thing that they was doing prior to the deliverance. Guess what? They didn't do anything different after the deliverance. That's why I'm not quick to cast demons out all the time. I do it as led of the Lord. Because I know that a lot of times with deliverance, there's great healing that has to take place. And if you don't put the healing ball in motion, you just got tired, <laughs> worked up a lot of sweat, got temporary freedom for a moment, but nothing changes. And again, it's not that anything was wrong with the one that administered deliverance. The problem comes in with what you do after deliverance. If you don't change your thinking, if you don't fill yourself up with the right stuff, if you are unaware that what you got delivered from was some real demons. Demon 
chains of oppression. If you are unaware of that, then guess what? Trust me, he's coming back. Especially when you was in a cycle for years. We dealt with stuff in this place that had people bound for years. And oftentimes when people deal with stuff, it's stuff that they've dealt with for years. And we have to understand that joker been taking up residence in you for years. And has been quite comfortable in your house. Your house. The temple of God. Your body. Sometimes he's been there for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. And everything that you have been doing has been feeding him. And he has been coming stronger and stronger and stronger. That's why it's called a strong man. And anybody in this room, you've seen the power of a strong man. Because that joker will look at you and say, I ain't going nowhere. Some things are easier to get free from, but a strong man is a beast. Because guess what? I always tell people, you can have a legion before you get saved. Just because you say yes to Jesus don't mean that legion is gone. And you can get some freedom and release from this little demon and that little demon, but in the background, you still got that strong man like, but yeah, what? I ain't going nowhere. And one of the things I say is that enemy ain't going nowhere if you don't want him to go nowhere. Mm-hmm. You got to fight. And so people need to understand this scripture right here, Matthew chapter 12. Let us look at verse 43. And it says, when an unclean spirit, when a demon, unclean, a spirit that ain't like God, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, leaves a man, when deliverance goes forth, guess what? At that moment, he's looking for somewhere to go. He has been evicted from you, but he's looking for somewhere to go. That's why sometimes when deliverance goes forth, you may get one person free and then it may jump on another. That's why everybody in the atmosphere needs to be in the right frame of mind of understanding as to what's taking place. Because once that joker come out of somebody, he going around the room and say, where can I go next? Looking for a place. Because how many of y'all know Satan get his best work done through a body? That's right. Yeah. They was cast into the, the pigs, but the pigs died. Couldn't get much work done in an animal. Uh, uh, uh. Demon spirits don't get a lot of work done in in a objects. Can they flow? Yes. Can they get it in animals and things of that nature? Yes, we see that in the scripture. But Satan loves you. He wants to use you. Because he knows he can get a lot of work done through you. So what you have to understand is if he's been living in you for a long time and has been strong because you've been feeding him, when a moment comes and you get free, it ain't that simple. It says when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Then he has a conversation. You know what? He says, guess what I'm going to do? I will return to my house. (laughs) Y'all better catch that. That joker says, I will return to my house. Because he has claimed you. I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes and he finds it empty, because yes, you got free. What had you bound ain't ain't that you got free. But when he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Empty, swept and put in order. One thing about it, your temple should never be empty. It should be put in order and it should be free from what ain't right. But you got to understand the importance of filling up your house with the right stuff. That's why I said even this morning, if you don't ever get your personal relationship right with God, if you don't ever feed your spirit with the word, if you don't ever commune with the with God, guess what? You're empty. And he will take up residence. So it says, 
When he comes, he finds it empty, swept clean, and put in order. And then he said, you know what? He or she ain't did nothing. They had a moment. He or she ain't do nothing. But guess what? We're going to make it harder this time. Because you know what we're going to do? We're going to go get some friends. <laughs> then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits. More wicked than himself. Basically, you thought he was the beast. You thought he was the beast. He going to come with something else. And take you to another level that you never even imagined. That's why some people, can I say this? Some people can get, 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 get delivered. I, I, I think about a young lady that I knew that had dealt with some spirits of lust. And as she got delivered from her spirits of lust, and she began to walk in the things of God and live a life according to God. But then she opened up that door again. When she opened up that door, it took her on a journey that she ain't returned from yet. And in the midst of that journey, the very things that she used to do when she was bound by those spirits of lust, oh, that went to a whole nother level. Then it get to the point, oh, no, 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 no longer is my lust only with one person. Now my lust is with multiple people. Now my lust is on the level. Not only am I with men, but now I'm also with women. See, that lust will, that demon will come back with spirits more wicked than itself. That's why you got to understand what you're dealing with. When you get free, you need to close the door and be determined that you ain't going to ever open that door again. Because you will find yourself doing stuff that you never even thought you would do. Stuff that you said that you would never do. The very thing that you say you will never do, Satan is on a mission to get you to do it. So he'll leave and he'll come back. It says, with seven, seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Come on, y'all. We're about to set up shop like never before. They come back and they do what? They enter and dwell. Enter and stay. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Let me tell you something. Don't play with deliverance. Don't play with deliverance. Because it lets you know the last state of the man is worse than the first. Oh, you thought you was messed up then. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. People better believe that the Bible is true. The word of God is true. And so that's what we have to understand when God moves. And so, breaking old cycles. When I was seeking the Lord about what to preach on last week that I never got to, one word immediately popped into my head, and that was cycles. How many of y'all know God gave me different ways to minister a word? He may often put songs into my head. Where my old school people at? I need my old school people to help me out with this song. That the Lord put in my spirit as it pertains to the earth cycle that popped into my head. And so, this is an old song by Friends of Distinction. Oh, gosh. Tell the folks. Some of y'all ain't never heard of them, right? I'm an ever rolling wind. Oh, yeah, I know that, John. I know that. I know that. Without a destination real, I'm an ever spinning top, <laughs> whirling around till I drop. Oh, but what am I to do? My mind is in. Oh, 
me go in circles. Come on, y'all. Come on. Oh, round and round I go. I'm spun out over you. Let me tell you something. That's the song that I heard in my head when I thought about cycles. Because when you think about that particular song and the lyrics, just running around in circles, you know, going, my mind is in a whirlpool, you know, just, just, just tossed to and fro, amen. And then the next thing that came to my mind as I was seeking the Lord, turn your Bible to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is in the beginning of the Bible, amen, for those of you all that don't know how to use your Bible yet. <laughs> man. If you look in the back, I'm about to come and get you, because Deuteronomy is in the front. But the next thing that came to my mind was a scripture. And this is just how he gave it to me. He gave me a song, then he dropped a scripture in my head. Deuteronomy chapter 2, starting at verse 1. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 1. And two is what I want to look at. And the word of the Lord says, Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord spoke to me, and we skirted Mount Seir for many days. And the Lord spoke to me saying, You have skirted this mountain long enough. Turn northward. I like the message translation because the message translation uh, is that you've been going around in circles in these hills long enough go north. And then after he dropped the song and after he dropped the spirit, I mean the, 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 the particular scripture, he brought it to my mind, I need you to go and find a poem that you wrote back in 1993. 1993. So he had me to search for a poem and in my mind, I could see the poem immediately because I know the title of the poem that I actually wrote. And so let me show you because when, when God gave me this poem to write in 1993, my life was in a whirlwind, coming out of a whirlwind. I, was, I had went through a whole bunch of stuff in my life. But then when he gave me the poem, he gave me a picture. This is the picture that he had me to draw. Circle. And in my book, where you see all my poetry at, I got this image in there. And so I drew this picture as part of the title, but let me share with you what the poem said. Can you imagine being enclosed in a circle? Trapped in a cycle of trying to get out with no entrance or exit. Because when you see this, you see all the arrows. You closed in in this circle. The arrows show a desire to want to get out. And every way you look and every way you try, you can't get out. So it says trapped in a cycle of trying to get out with no entrance or exit, but yet you're there. And inside this circle are people. Inside this circle are places and things. Some good and some bad. Some slaves and some free. But in order to have peace amongst the confusion, one must dig deep. Because the sun of the morning is on the loose to kill, steal, and destroy. But if God Almighty is in your heart, he can't have your joy. But I think about where I was in my life at that time because I had just been in a life for years caught up in a cycle, feeling like I was running around in circles, but nothing was ever changing. I felt trapped within myself, wanting to get out, but yet bound. And so, what is a cycle? A cycle is a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. I'm going to say that again. A cycle. Because I was caught up in a cycle. A cycle. At that time in 
93. I was trying to get free from my addiction. I was caught up in a cycle. Again, a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same old order. See, my life consisted of this. Go to work. Hairstylist. Fix my clients. Rack up all that money in the course of the day. I could, I could work and in the course of a week, I could easily bring home $1,000. I mean, back then, you ain't had shops on every corner. And I was good at what I did. Amen? And so... You, you, I, I, will, I will just rack up money. In there doing hair the whole nine yards. Sometimes hide why I'm doing it. <laughs> Sometimes I wasn't. But one thing about it. My cycle was work. Make you look good. Get paid. And then go buy my drugs. Go get high. And then once I started getting high. It was on a cycle. Especially when I started that crack. My whole cycle was. Because you know. You, you, you don't buy everything at once. Because you tell yourself. See, because when you caught up in a cycle, you lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. You tell yourself, I'm only going to spend $100. I'm not spending all my money tonight. Soon after that's gone, what you do? Cycle. Get in your car. Go to the strip. Car. You do that over and over and over again. Only thing that stopped you was that you couldn't find nothing else. Or your money ran out. But then you go to bed, wake up the next day, start it all over again. We got cycles in relationships. We hook up. We get with a person. We meet them. We sleep with them. Then we want to try to get to know them. We go out to dinner. We hang out. Then we go back and we sleep together. We go out. We hang out. We sleep together. It becomes an ongoing cycle. And you tell yourself, I ain't going to do this no more. Because guess what, God? God, I know this is wrong. But yet you in that circle, in that cycle. Because you will never get free if you don't change your patterns. You will never get free doing the same thing over and over again. And so I was in a cycle it becomes regularly repeated behavior in the same order. Look at your own life. Because something happens when you call it better cycle. Something happens. A thought comes. Something triggers you. And you find yourself in the same place over and over again. You got to begin to check that. And so when you think about it, turn to... James chapter 1, because we're going to see in the word of God how a cycle operates. James chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse 13. It's time for us to get free and break these old cycles in our life. And I'm here to tell you once again, you can know that you need to change, but if you don't change, you won't never change. Can I say that one more time? You can know that you need to change, but you won't change. And if you don't change, you will never change. You have to do something different in order to break the cycles in your life. The things that you do that have you bound. And so James chapter 1 started at verse 13. This is a cycle in the lives of many people. The, verse, the word of God says, verse 13, James chapter 1. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Because let me tell you something. Whatever you're tempted with, God ain't tempting you. I'm going to tell you something. God don't tempt you with sin. God does not tempt you to sin. Satan does. So I, when it comes down to it, let no one say when I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. That's not what God would do to you. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires. See, Satan, also known as the tempter, will present you with your desire. See, this is your desire. All he do is say, I already know what you like. This is your desire. So guess what? When he presented to you, he presented to you, and the only reason this is effective is because of what's inside of you. Because if this don't phase you, I could tempt it and put it in your face all day long, and it won't even do anything to you. 
But Satan know what you like. Oh, Satan know what you like. And what makes me so upset about the devil is that the same old stuff work. He don't come with nothing new. The same old stuff works. Because you ain't got smart enough to realize yet. I see you, devil. Same stuff, different day. Same stuff, different person. Same stuff, different year. Ain't nothing different. He come with the same old thing. But when you think about this cycle, it says, For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own, say my own desires. When I get off track, Repeat, when I get off track, I get off track. And, I get sin, and I give in to sin, it's because I, it's because I have given in to my own desires that was presented before me by the enemy who knows what's in me. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. The cycle. Because he got to draw you. He's only tapping to what's on the inside of you. And then once he gets your attention, because you don't cast it down. Because you don't fight. And now that he know he got you focused on the wrong thing, next thing you know, here comes the next part of the cycle. Then when desire has conceived, because now that thing deep down in your spirit, you want to do it. It's down on the inside of you now. He enticed you. He drew you. He only tapped into what's on the inside of you. But when that thing has conceived, when it has given birth, when it has taken root on the inside of you, because when you think about conception, Satan can plant a seed, but guess what? Only you allow it to bring forth conception. Only you. But when it has been conceived, because don't you understand that in the natural, so it is in the spirit. In the natural, when something has been implanted into a woman, when a seed of a man has been implanted on the inside of her, and it takes root and connects with her egg, how many of y'all know something becomes planted in the womb? It's called a baby. But guess what? It grows. Because once that seed is there, it's going to come out right or wrong. Sometimes it's going to come out to full term. Sometimes it may be a miscarriage. Sometimes people purposely have an abortion. Y'all need to do some spiritual abortions in your life. And kill some things that you have allowed to be planted in your spirit by the enemy. Take authority. Make a decision to kill what's in you that ain't right. But when you understand the cycle of life, the cycle of sin, once it has conceived, conception is taking place in your life, in your spirit. How many of y'all know that thing coming out? It's going to come forward one way or another. And so then when desire has conceived, what does it do? The word of God says it gives birth. And when a seed of sin has been planted in your life, it is not going to bring forth anything positive. It gives birth to what? What does the word say? It gives birth to what? It gives birth to sin. To sin. And sin, when it is full grown, it brings forth death. That very thing kills so much in your life. Kills so much in your spirit. Kill so much in those that you come in contact with. Your sin. Your sin affects a lot of people. That's it. People bound because of other people's sin. Things that was on them that attached themselves to others affected them. Sin is dangerous. Sin is major. And there is a cycle. But you have to understand that you can only give birth to sin if you give into that desire. Des the desire may be there, but you ain't got to give into it. You may still want to do this and that, but you ain't got to give into it. And do you understand that when you don't give into it, you take away its power? 
When you don't feed the strong man, you take away his power. And then you find yourself able to break the cycle. And so, that scripture shows you the cycle of sin. The cycle. And so when cycles become a part of your life, your tagline becomes, I know. See, when somebody talks to you about your cycle, mm. that they see you in, I know. I know. I know. You become like a broken record. I know. I know. You know you don't need to be doing it right. I know. You know this ain't good for you. I know. Has the Lord spoke to you and revealed to you that you shouldn't do it? Yes, but you're still doing it and you know that's wrong. Yeah, I know. Do something with what you know. I get tired of I know. I get tired of I know. Because guess what? The devil know that's all you're going to say is I know. Yeah, you know what you're doing about it. What you going to do with what you know. And so many know the cycle that they're in. Some people know the cycles of bondage that they are in. They know the same stuff that Satan uses to keep them trapped in their bondage. They know it. Many know the cycle that they are in, but they don't come out of it. They don't come out of it. And again, like I said, I posted something November the 25th, and it says you can know all day long that you need to change. But if you don't change, you will never change. And so I also have a quote that I'm known for saying. If you've been around me an amount of time, I always say, if you could change the way a person thinks, you can change how they live. Your life ain't changed because you ain't changed your thinking. Your cycles haven't broken because you haven't changed your thinking. Thinking. You know what? You just don't like the drama that come along with it, but you ain't tired of it. See, 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 when I was addicted, because an addiction is a beast, when I was addicted, I could see how it was destroying my life, but I ain't hated enough. Gotta hate it. I didn't hate it enough. I, I, I just didn't want to spend all my money. <laughs> I just didn't want to have to resort to certain things to get what I needed. I, 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 I ain't want to stop getting high, I just didn't want to smoke crack. I still wanted to smoke both. I still wanted to smoke weed. I still wanted to drop my purple haze. I still wanted to do that. I just didn't like, you know, what the crack did to me. So my mindset was jacked up. You want to know why? Because I still wanted to get high. <clears throat> it wasn't until, until my thinking changed, till I stopped lying to myself, telling myself that I can handle this. I, I, I ain't going to do it as much as I used to. Well, guess what? I never woke up and said I wanted to be a drug addict, but I became one. I never, I never in my life said I wanted to be a sex addict, but I became one. I never, I never in my life said I wanted to do a lot of things, but because of my thinking, because of my thinking, thinking got to change. If your thinking does not change, you will not break the cycles in your life. The problem with the church today is that we love what God hates. Mm. <laughs> we love what God hates. Until you hate what God hates, you won't change. Right. Stop fighting with God about why he don't want you to do this and why this ain't okay. God got more sense than any of us. And if he put it in his word, if his spirit convicts you, and, 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 and people in your life try to show you why something ain't beneficial to you, then guess what? You ain't got to question everything. Like Nike, what? Just do it. But as long as we love what he hates, we'll stay by it. Bound. And so when you think about the song that I tried to sing earlier, in the song, it had some powerful lyrics, Amen. Uh, uh, describing being trapped in a cycle or circle. And there was a particular line that stood out to me in that song. And it says, what am I to do? My mind is in a whirlpool. When your mind is in a whirlpool, it is in confusion and overdrive. A whirlpool is constantly moving. That's why a lot of times your mind is just tormented. In that cycle that you're in, it's, you sometimes feel like you're losing your mind. So when your mind is in a whirlpool, it is in confusion and overdrive. And so I love, good God, from 
Zion. It amazes me how God can just speak through a natural situation. And y'all know I love definitions. And so the following natural definition of a whirlpool can be applied to one state. A whirlpool is a water moving rapidly. My interjection is thoughts that are tossed to and fro and back and forth in your mind. A whirlpool is a water moving rapidly in a circle. In a circle. When you think about it, right here. Right here in your mind. Because how many of y'all know your mind controls everything you do? That whirlpool is here. See, before you start doing this or that, it's here. And so a whirlpool is a water moving rapidly, thoughts tossed to and fro, back and front, in a circle in your mind, so as to produce, check this out, this is the definition, so as to produce a depression. Mm -hmm. Woo! When you think about it, a depression, a sad, defeated, or hopeless state, because that's what a whirlpool does. A whirlpool is a water moving rapidly in a circle so as to produce a depression, a sad, defeated, or hopeless state in the center. The center of what? Your soul. In the seat of your emotions. Into which floating objects, could God from Zion, floating objects represent any and everything that's negative. That water, that cycle, it does all of that so that negative things can be drawn in. So again, let me read it without my inserts and then I'll add my inserts. A whirlpool is a water moving rapidly in a circle so as to produce a depression in the center into which floating objects may be drawn in. My inserts, a whirlpool is a water moving rapidly, thoughts tossed to and fro, back to back in a circle in your mind so as to produce a depression, a sad, defeated, or hopeless state in the center of your soul, the seat of your emotions into which floating objects, anything and everything that is negative that they may be drawn in. How many of y'all know? Satan waits. And Satan watches for openings to come in. He waits and he watches for openings to come in. Some of us used to hang out in the streets and we all know what BYOL means, right? Mm -hmm. So we heard of what BYOL means. Well, I'm telling you today, B-O-Y-M, beware of your mind. Y'all can hashtag that, put that on Facebook, social media, whatever you want to do. Not now. <laughs> I need to put that in there right now because some of y'all may try to hashtag that next thing you know you're on Instagram, Snapchat and all that stay focused but when you think about it B-O-Y-M beware of your mind unrenewed not transformed and refusing to cast down and bringing into obedience will keep you trapped going in circles when your mind isn't renewed, when your mind isn't transformed, when you don't cast down negative thoughts, that's going to keep you trapped in a cycle. Then you think about the scripture that we looked at in Deuteronomy. You don't have to turn there because we already read it. But Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 2, it says, you have been going around in circles these hills long enough. Go north. It was only time-wise when you think about it. It was actually an 11-day journey for the children of Israel to get to the place where God was trying to take them. But it took them 40 years. See, what you got to understand, there's some place that God is trying to take you, but he can't get you there yet. Because you've been skirting around the same mountain in circles for a long time. There isn't a desire in for your life. He has somewhere that he's trying to take you. Just like he was trying to take the children to the promised land. God got some promises for you. God got purpose on your life. But guess what? Sometimes it takes you forever to get to your purpose. Because you keep running around in circles. And if you don't change your life, you will find yourself dying off in the wilderness. Because everybody didn't make it. 
make it to their purpose. And so, what should have only been 11 days <coughs> took 40 years. They were stiff neck, hard neck, and they lacked consistency. God will open up a door, do a miraculous thing in their life. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, God, you're so wonderful. You move so mighty in my situation. Hallelujah. You got us out of Egypt. You put us on dry ground. You saved us from Pharaoh and his army. You are so wonderful, and I'm so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. The next thing you know. I don't even understand why they out here. Back when we was in Egypt, we at least had this and on and on. All type of negative. Next thing you know, the man of God goes up to get the word of the Lord, to be in the presence of the Lord. The people become impatient because a lot of times people become impatient with the process. So next thing you know, they want to raise up their own God. You need to get rid of the gods that's in your life. That ain't the true and living God. But now they want to raise up their own God. Now they want to be down there just partying and doing everything. Just, just, just living Lives that don't please God. And so it becomes an ongoing cycle. So be for real. Look at your own life. Recognize your own cycles and your circles. When will you recognize on your journey? When will you get to a point where you realize, okay, I'm walking in circles. Oh, that's a nice plant right there. I'm walking in circles. Thinking I'm going somewhere. Wait, I, I done saw this before. I, 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 I'm trying to get somewhere, but it seems like I keep coming across the same thing. When are you going to recognize the signs? To say, I done seen this before. I need to go another direction. Because if you're trying to get to a destination, even in your natural car, and you find yourself driving, and you be like, man, didn't we just come past this gas station? And then you try to do it on your own again from memory. You try to do it on your own from memory, you drive, and then you find yourself passing the same gas station again, because that's what we do in our life. We try to change our own life on our own. Hmm. But when will we realize that we need to listen to the GPS, God's positioning system? God's positioning system. Because he knows the way that you should go. And he's trying to tell you, you've been running in circles, I need you to go north. So when will you recognize your own journey and say, I have come up on this same sign 10 times already? Again, SSDD, same sign, same scenario, same subject, same sin, different day, different de decade, but the same. When will you get tired of the cycle? And go north. And so God told them, go north. Because what he was saying, it's time for you to change direction. Because the path that you've been taking is the wrong one. It has not been effective in your life. So now I need you to hear my voice as I say, go north. How many of y'all know when he told them you've been skirting around this mountain long enough, go north? Y'all know they did have an option. Just like every time the Spirit speaks to you, you do have an option. Every time I, your leader, speak to you and give you wisdom and advice, you do know that you have an option. So they had a choice to obey or disobey. And God speaks to us and has been speaking to us for some time. Hearing and obeying is what has been lacking. And so cycles are repeated behavior. If you don't play back the films of your actions, because I always tell people, you need to go back and look at your patterns. You need to look at each situation to see how did you end up here again. Cycles. And so if you don't replay the films of your actions, not somebody else's, your actions, See your faults, see your wrong choices, and the things that you did that got you trapped in your cycles, you will never, somebody say never, never. you will never get out. Or you will exit one whirlpool and enter into another.
another and another and another. It's time to learn from past mistakes and break negative cycles in your life. When you know better, do better. That is the word of the Lord on today. Amen. 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 I pray that those of you all that have taken this opportunity to tune into our live stream, I pray that this message has blessed you. I pray that God has pricked your spirit in some ways and that you learn how to break the cycles. One thing I am fully aware of, and I talked about this earlier, is that sometimes we need other people in our life for the sake of accountability and helping us to break cycles. There are certain things that I've been through in my life I can help you with because I've been there. You may not know how to break the cycle, but I know how to, I know how to break the cycle. You deal with lust, I can help you with that. You, 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 you've been in abusive relationships and got caught up in that for a while, I can help you with that. You, you, you had addictions with drugs and alcohol, I can help you with that. You had some issues with procrastination, time management, I can help you with that. Let me tell you something, God has allowed me to go through and come out of so much stuff so that I can help somebody else. And guess what? If I'm walking free, and I know we work, Oh, you should listen to me. Makes sense. Makes sense. God has allowed different people in the body of Christ to get free from stuff. I couldn't help get myself free from addictions on my own. I needed help. Sometimes we got to simply humble ourselves and realize that we need somebody to help us. Because if they got free, they went through a process and they can tell you how to be free. But if you listen and think in the process that you got a better plan, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up for failure. And so, I pray that it bless you. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. That was a good word, wasn't it? It was a rebuking word, I guess. Everybody cried. So. <laughs> Let me tell you, cycles, the definition that she gave just stood out to me because it said a series of events repeated in the same order. The same order. You did the same thing in the same way. And you ain't got no...